Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to use the NPER, or Number of Periods function in Excel, in order to figure out how long it's going to take me to reach a particular future goal amount. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. You could actually use a future value function and then a goal seek tool, but I'm going to use the Number of Periods function. So I've got a little calculator set up for me here. It's pretty plain, and I'm predicting here, I'm going to say 50 bucks a week and an annual rate of return of 11%. And don't roll your eyes at it, you can do it. 11% is perfectly reasonable now that uh, we're past the past few years. So maybe it's a uh, nice uh, stock growth mutual fund or something like that. Um, and we can play around with this number too if you're more conservative. So my goal amount though is 3,400 bucks. I want $3,400 and maybe it's a down payment for something or maybe it's because I want to go on a particular vacation or who knows. But I need to get to 3,400 bucks and I can only afford to save $50 per week. So I'm going to head over to my number of weeks cell, which in my case is B4. And I'm going to go ahead and start to type out the number of periods function equals NPER. Oops, I want to leave that little screen tip up there for a second. There we go. All right, just so you can see that, returns the number of payment periods for an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. Of course, that never really happens in real life, but so be it. All right, there's a few parameters I need to put in here. Keep in mind, I'm doing weekly savings. The first parameter at once is my rate, my rate of return, my interest rate. So I'm going to click on the cell that contains my annual rate of return and I'm going to divide it by 52 and that will give me my weekly rate of return. I'm going to do weekly compounding. I'm adding money every week. Then a comma. Now it wants to know my payment and this is going to be how much I'm paying into my mutual fund. So I'm going to type a minus sign and then click on the cell that contains my weekly savings. Now that's a negative because it's a cash outflow. It's money that is leaving me. Money that leaves you is an outflow. It's negative, so it gets a negative or a minus sign. Money that you receive is a positive. That's a cash inflow. Then I do a comma. Now for present value is how much money do you have right now? I didn't really plan for that, so I'm assuming I'm starting with zero, so I'm going to enter in a zero. Then comma. I need this optional fourth parameter here, future value. My future amount that I want is of course my goal amount of $3,400, but I'm not going to type in $3,400. I'm going to click on the cell that contains that goal amount. There we go. And last but not least, I usually don't use the type, but basically are you putting your money in at the end of the period or the beginning of the period? This actually could factor in, you know. I mean, if you put your money at the beginning of the week, Starting with the first week, you're going to get a week's of interest. But if you put it in at the end of the week, that means you're not going to get interest on the first week. Uh, well, put it at the beginning of the week. Maybe every Monday. We'll say Monday's the beginning of our week. So all I have to do is put a 1 in there to represent that. Okay, so this is my number of periods function. I've got my annual rate divided by 52 gives me a weekly rate. I've got a negative version of my weekly savings amount. I've got zero, which represents my initial savings. I've got zero bucks right now. And then I've uh, my goal amount, of course, is the cell that contains my 3,400. And one means I'm putting my money in at the beginning of the period. All I have to do now is press Enter. And Excel tells me that it's going to take me 63 and a half weeks to reach my goal. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to figure out how many months that is. Um, let's see. And we could be very, very general about this. In fact, let's do it this way. I'm going to take my years equals the number of weeks divided by 52. And it tells me that it's just going to be about 1.22 years. Okay. And then I think what I'll do is I'll go to, for months, I'll just take my number of years and uh, multiply that by 12, and I'll determine that it's about 14.64 months. I'll select these and make them all just a couple decimal places. There we go, 63 weeks, or about one and a quarter years. That's how long it's going to take me to reach my goal if I save 50 bucks a week. Now, what if you were getting 18% return? I know, 18% return, obviously we would expect the time to go down. And sure enough, it drops from about 63 weeks to about 61 weeks. So not a huge difference there in time. All right, so let's put this down to 9%. 
and maybe instead of 50 bucks a week maybe you can squeak out a hundred bucks a week and if I do that it's only going to take about seven and a half months okay 33 weeks in order to reach that goal if I can save $100 a month and of course this is all better than just sticking the money under your mattress because if you put the money under your mattress you get a zero percent return so hundred dollars a week goal is to get to thirty four hundred dollars if you're just putting it under your mattress it's gonna take you thirty four weeks one hundred dollars a week thirty four weeks gets you to thirty four hundred dollars but if you can get some kind of return on your money it will take less time alright so that is the number of periods functions now if you do have money already saved up instead of just typing a zero in there you could actually put that amount okay um, and then you'll have even more accurate numbers and you could of course rerun this maybe after a few weeks after you've built up, built up some money you could rerun this calculation using slightly different annual rate of return and of course then having that present value amount have fun